In this video, I want to give you the top 10 tips on improving the performance of your FileMaker solution. So what I'm talking about is the performance that your clients are going to see as they access your FileMaker solution using FileMaker Pro, Go, or even WebDirect. Now, before we get going, I want to point out that this conversation comes from our paid video training course. We spend several hours or more talking about how to improve performance. So this is a kind of a quick brain dump or a summary of all the things you need to know. If you want more of an in-depth detailed discussion, check out our complete FileMaker training bundle at fmtraining.tv. Now, if you're an established FileMaker developer, you've been around for a number of years, all this information you should already know. If you're new to the FileMaker platform, you can see all the sorts of great things that you can build with FileMaker and how it can improve people's lives and how it can really take the pain away from their operations by improving efficiency, right? And so you understand the benefits of FileMaker, but as you build a solution, the solution may start to run a little bit slower, especially if you have lots of records, lots of users, and you're accessing the solution over a wide area network, i.e. the internet. The performance tuning conversation has been around for many, many years in the FileMaker platform. However, as FileMaker becomes more advanced, it's become clear as a trainer that we need to focus on two different areas. The first area is trying to minimize the amount of data that's coming down from the FileMaker server to the client. Don't send the client any unnecessary information it doesn't really need. The second area that even Claris has pointed out in their engineering blog is the idea of churn. Churn or churning is a loose term that we use to apply to FileMaker when it's busily processing the data that it already has, but it's doing that before it can display it to the user. So really the data has already come down from the server to the client, and now the client has to process that and display it. And so excessive churning can cause performance drop-off as well as actually asking for all the data that come down from the server. So we have really two areas of focus that we need to think about. So the top 10 things that can improve performance of your FileMaker solution are, in no particular order, minimize the summarizing of record data on a layout. And what do I mean by this? Well, you can define a summary field, or you can create a calculation field that summarizes related data. If you put these sorts of summaries on your layouts, and you have a large number of records, and that server is connected in another location, you're going to see a measurable, noticeable delay in performance of FileMaker. That's because FileMaker is attempting to summarize this information and display it to you. Now, this is primarily an issue of lots of data coming down from the server to the client when the user doesn't really need to see all that information. Now, if you want to have a summary field on the screen, I recommend using a number field and then scripting a process that will calculate that for you on demand. So the idea is that you have an update button. If the person wants to see updated financials, they can press it knowing that there will be a delay. However, if you just put the summary fields on the screen, then FileMaker will be calculating them all the time, whether the user wants it or needs that information or not. So the goal is to precisely control when summaries are triggered. Item number two is if you have lots of records in your FileMaker system, you want to do two things. You want to minimize the number of records the users are interacting with. So if you have 100,000 records or a million records, you want the users to be restricted to a smaller group of records. And of course, this solves a lot of performance problems if you're able to do this. Along with limiting the number of records, you want to limit when you sort those records. So bringing down a lot of records for the user to view is one issue. And of course, the second issue is sorting those records for people to see. If your user is viewing 100 records and you want to sort 100 records, that's fine. If your user just opens up their FileMaker file and sees 50,000 records or a million records and you automatically sort those, they're going to see a progress bar and a dialogue and a delay. So as a quick tip, you might want to present your user with a search screen initially before letting them just browse through all the records. That will allow them to do a search for maybe all the people in a certain state or in a geographical region, or maybe all the people that have a certain last name, or maybe just all your active customers as opposed to all the customers within that database. This will minimize the amount of data that comes down. It also minimizes the amount of churn as FileMaker attempts to process summaries, totals, and other information. Number four on our list is a pretty basic item, which is to limit the amount of large graphics that you have on your FileMaker layout. And of course, this is pretty easy to understand. If you have lots of large images that are beautiful, high color images, and you bring those down, then that's going to push all that data down through the network before the user can see the layout. It also affects websites. And of course, these days, people have bigger internet connections. But the issues are the same. Back 20 years ago, we didn't have full screen images everywhere. 
in full screen video because the internet couldn't handle it. Well, now people have bigger internet connections. And of course, web designers want to put big images and full screen video on their websites. But sometimes that's a bad idea because it slows things down. And it's no different in the world of FileMaker. So if you have a FileMaker layout and you have buttons, make sure those buttons are using SVG graphics. These are vector-based mathematical graphics that are super efficient. They're very small, they're very quick. And these are the graphics that are built into FileMaker with the icons. If you're gonna add your own icons or glyphs to the buttons, you wanna make sure that you're getting that artwork as SVG artwork because that data has to come down from the server to the user and then has to be displayed on screen. Number five on the performance tuning list are custom themes and shared styles. Once again, everything I'm saying here has been highlighted by Claris in their engineering blogs. Keep in mind that they don't present the material in the same way and they don't provide historical context in that engineering blog. But the correct term for this is custom themes and shared styles. So the idea is that if you have a brand new FileMaker file that was recently created, check the theme that it's using. It's probably using a touch theme or inspire theme or some other theme like that. If you have an older FileMaker file that's been around for a long time, it might be using the classic theme. The classic theme is very fat under the hood. It's very big, it's very large, and it played a very important role back in the day of FileMaker 12. However, with modern versions of FileMaker, classic theme is almost twice the weight of other themes. So you need to really think about changing the theme and restyling the layout and getting rid of the classic theme. We've had users who complained about Windows installations. They had an office full of Windows computers. The company had kind of cheaped out a little bit and bought lower end Windows computers. And it worked great on everything else except on FileMaker where they had classic themes. And then the rendering and performance was slow. As soon as we rebuilt the layouts using a modern theme, which was much lighter weight and much more performant, the performance problems went away. So it's important to think about the theme that you're using. Also, as you build the layout, don't style every element on the layout individually. And so what do I mean by this? Well, you need to create a style for an object like a button and then share that style throughout the layout. How do you do that? Check out our paid FileMaker video courses because we dive into this and we spend 20 or 30 minutes on this one topic. And now another area you want to minimize is the use of unstored calculations. Now, there's a whole conversation that goes on in our paid video training about stored calculations versus unstored. There's times where you can use a stored calculation, which gives you certain performance benefits, but there are a lot of times you cannot or should not use a stored calculation. Keep in mind that as the FileMaker data comes down from the server, if you have a lot of unstored calculations on the screen, your local FileMaker client is gonna to have to churn that data to generate the results you need to see on the layout. So putting lots and lots and lots of unstored calculations will result in higher levels of churn. And as it churns, that starts to become a noticeable delay for the user. Now, the next item that you can do to improve performance is how you structure your FileMaker file. And we talk about this at great length within our training, and it's how you structure the relationships. And so the basic idea is that if you build a relational diagram and you just throw it together, you end up with a giant spidery mess of table occurrences cross-connected everywhere. It's pretty hard to follow. It also causes a lot of churn of FileMaker and slows down the user's access to the FileMaker file. So Claris Engineering officially recommends not to do a giant nasty spider diagram, which effectively creates one table occurrence group. Now, if you don't understand table occurrence groups, once again, go check out our training. What Claris Engineering says is that you need to limit the context of the table occurrences that you're looking at. So Claris officially recommends a structure like this. Now, in terms of terminology, the FileMaker community calls this anchor buoy. Anchor buoy is where you create separate table occurrence groups, sometimes even smaller than this. And what this allows FileMaker to do is just to focus on the table occurrence group. Keep in mind that when FileMaker displays a record on a layout, it has to calculate and think about all these relationships here. If you have a bunch of grandchildren relationships or great-grandchildren relationships, it has to calculate all that too. And that causes a noticeable slowdown. So what you want to do is keep these table occurrence groups as small as possible, only showing what you need to display. This spider diagram right here, if you base a layout, say for example, on this little table occurrence over here, it has to cross-calculate all the necessary things it needs to display. This causes a great deal of data download and data churning and it can cause a huge performance penalty in your FileMaker solution. So once again, just throwing it all together, 
kind of in an ad hoc way is great for learning, but as you have to deploy a solution to multiple users and you want those users to be happy with quick performing FileMaker applications, you need to think about reorganizing this and customizing this. So if you want more information about this, check out our videos on Anchor Buoy Design. Now, Anchor Buoy is one design methodology, but even more so than that, I have a lot of senior engineers who refuse to create a table occurrence group with five or six levels of hops. So as you can see right here, if you built a layout that was based on this table occurrence right here, then these are all children, and these are kind of normal, these are expected, and then you build this out here. This is a great-grandchild. Well, some people go great-grandchild, great-great-great-great-great-great-great, like five or six or eight of these things deep. The performance can really be negatively affected when you start jumping that far. So having Anchor Buoy is a great start, but also making sure that you limit the number of levels in the relationship because the farther it has to go, if you have to jump out five or six or seven hops, performance can be negatively affected. Now, there's no technical reason why you can't build a relationship that deep. It will work. However, the question is, will it work fast enough to keep your customers happy? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Which brings me back to my next hot tip about the FileMaker platform. As you're building a custom solution, you need to actually host that solution up on a server in the cloud because it allows you to see the performance that other people are going to experience as you're building the FileMaker solution. Nothing is worse than you building a FileMaker solution locally with five records on your local hard drive. Then you tell your customer, whether they're an in-house customer or you're a consultant for hire, that, oh, by the way, I built it right here. We put it up on the server and then it goes really slow. Then the customer has all these complaints. FileMaker is slow. FileMaker is bad. The developer is slow. The developer is bad. We should have hired someone else or, or used different software. How do you prevent that from happening to you? You need to put a Macintosh and a Windows computer on your desk so you can test on both. You put the database actually up on a FileMaker server or FileMaker Cloud 2 if you want to use Cloud 2. Then you also need to load 5, 10,000, 30,000 or more records into the system. And as you build, you interact with those records. That way you're not just working with five records because that's not really an honest assessment. Even on a server situation, you could have a FileMaker server all the way around the other side of the planet and if all it has to do is give you five records, it's going to do it really fast. Ask it to do 100,000 records. Then you'll start to see a realistic simulation of what your customers are likely to see. So you need to build your solution and test in flight as you're going. So it's not a surprise at the end of the process. Another tip to think about is not putting too many relationships on a specific layout. So, of course, along the lines of minimizing the size of the table occurrence group, you might want to have a layout with as few portals on it as possible. Also, we recommend not sorting the portals unless you really, really, really need to see that data sorted. Because every time it needs to sort the data, it's either going to download the data and then process it. Or if your FileMaker client has already cached the data locally, it's still going to churn and process to create that sort to display it for you. So only use sorts when you really need to. Limit the number of portals on screen. Try to limit the source of those portals. Now, of course, if your portal has 10 whole records in it and you want to sort those records, that's fine. I'm talking about when you have a portal with 500 items in it and you tell to sort that or a thousand items or even potentially more, which gets me to another great tip. If you want to display a list of information for a FileMaker user, give it to them in a list view, not a portal. If you have a very large found set of records you want to interact with, do it in a list view. Why? Because if you ask your FileMaker client to display your list, it's going to download just enough records for you to display that information on screen. If you try to display the same number of records in a portal, FileMaker is likely to download the entire found set that drives that portal. So you need to think about minimizing the use of portals for large sets of data, maximizing the use of list views. It's a great tip, and a lot of people miss this, and then, of course, they wonder why their solutions are so slow. If you're writing a calculation, we recommend the efficient use of if statements and case statements. The idea is that if you have an if statement or a case statement, FileMaker will keep evaluating it until it gets to a true condition and then it stops evaluating the calculation. So if you have a calculation with, you know, if this is true, then do this, and this is this, and this, and this. If you put the most likely outcome of the calculation at the bottom, FileMaker will process every possibility until it gets to the actual correct answer. Then it will stop. So if you know what the most likely outcome is, test for that first at the top. That will allow FileMaker to just begin calculating, get the correct answer, and then stop, right? And of course, if you're doing one record, that's fine. It's not a big deal. 
but I'm talking about when you have to display summary information or calculated totals across a found set of records. And FileMaker has to do that calculation 5,000 times. It's better that it does it at the top as opposed to going and then right? So that's the idea of performance improvement. Additionally, be careful about using the execute SQL function with large FileMaker datasets. A lot of advanced FileMaker developers, especially if they come from other data systems, love to use execute SQL because they figure that it's fundamentally faster than FileMaker. And since they already know SQL, they don't really have to learn FileMaker and they just code in that. Problem is execute SQL is generally going to be slower than the equivalent scripting you can provide in your own FileMaker solution. There is a subset of situations where execute SQL function is very valuable and very useful. Primarily, if you want to create reporting and you don't want to create relationships to drive that reporting. With execute SQL, you can do a find request and look through related data where you set up that relationship in the SQL statement. You don't actually have to set up the table occurrence groups on the diagram. That's where execute SQL can be very valuable, but you have to have the skills to do that. It's not the wonder tool or the perfect function for the SQL people to come into FileMaker and to make everything faster. Generally, if you use execute SQL for everything you're doing, you probably have a FileMaker file that's running slower than it should be. And lastly, I want to point out that staying up to date with FileMaker is a big benefit because over the years, FileMaker has improved the performance of the FileMaker platform. Specifically, FileMaker Server or equivalent versions of the cloud are being tuned for higher performance. Claris understands that performance is a concern for developers and they are making engineering improvements to the server and to the clients to make the performance run faster. However, no matter how efficient Claris tries to make FileMaker, it's up to you, the developer, to implement good techniques and good practices so your users have the fastest custom application available. So that covers our top tips about how to improve FileMaker performance. Keep in mind, if you feel that I went through this really, really fast, that's because I went through it really, really fast. If you want detailed information and knowledge, check out our annual FileMaker training bundle at fmtraining.tv.